Warning, please do not attempt to replicate the toy destruction you see in this video at home. Leave this sort of work to hopefully people who know what they're doing. Hello, welcome to Disney Cars Dark Side. This is episode three. Do you remember at the end of episode two? Well, I showed this die car set of knockoff toy cars uh, with uh, a question. How is the best way to get rid of these horrid, horrid cars? I've already gone through and shown you these vehicles. I've shown you that uh, it doesn't take much to pull a wheel off. They are extremely dangerous toys, uh, but they're pretty tough. I couldn't blow these guys up, and I think the bulk of the audience sort of said, well, that thing, that uh, that garden mulcher thing, might be the perfect way to destroy these toys. Lightning McQueen, are you feeling lucky? Do you reckon you'll survive what's down there? You know what? I don't think so. Okay, we'll start with Mac, I think. Bye-bye, Mac. That's a crushing defeat. Hey, Matt, bring the eye next. Um, Sheriff, is this? Woo -hoo -hoo! Whoa. Hey, that's the king. Bye bye, king. Whoever he is, I don't know his name. Oh, he jumped out. Oh, look at that, he's all custom now! Bye! Bye. I think Sally's next to go! Oh! There you go, another custom ring! Woo! Oh, she jumped again! She's hard to get! Oh, bye-bye! Okay, everyone's favourite, Mr. Mater! Put my meat, Lightning McQueen! Bye bye, Lightning! Okay, we'll come and inspect the damage down there somewhere. Well, I have to admit that was a whole ton of fun. That was the box those Disney cars knockoff ones came from, and this is what the cars have been transformed into. Very, very interesting pile of uh, wreckage here. Uh, they were pullback models, that's why there's some springs in there. Uh, one of them, the Sally, I think, kept wanting to jump out. In fact, I'm having trouble just recognizing who's here. That's the king. Okay, uh, parts of that Mack truck, I think it was. There it is. That actually had jumped out and I threw it in later on. So it's very curious the way that Crusher thing deals with stuff. Whoever that guy is there, I've got no idea. I know my audience will know. That's the back of Mater. Um, yeah, I'm actually just trying to find out. Oh, there's McQueen there. Look at that. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? It looks really nice. I like it when it gets pulled apart like that. It's like a piece of art. There we go. That's the way I won't get flagged. I'm actually making art, boys and girls. That is Crush Car Toy Art. Let me just pull this out because I want to separate the larger parts uh, from the smaller parts. Because I think the smaller parts tell a bit of a story of what was inside the cars. And like some sort of madman, I will try and reassemble the cars in a lineup. If that makes any sort of sense, I'm probably going to really struggle doing this. Okay, hopefully I've got some sort of separation of the larger parts to the smaller parts. And if you take a look at the cars now, they really do look fantastic. I love the look of that gone through the wreckage yard uh, feel. Um, Lightning McQueen, I think he's worked out the best. He's so distorted and contorted now. The way his smile has been ripped there. Uh, Mac also looks great too. The way that trailer just got destroyed, um, that was the king. And also I think Mater's a very interesting look as well, the way Mater has been crushed. Actually I think I've just found McQueen's eyes and the sheriff's door. Let me put those in the respective piles. I'd hate to get things wrong here. This knockoff dark side toy, it was $14.99, call that $15. Uh, it did have pullback motors, I'm not sure whether they were in all of the little toy cars. But I'm actually surprised at the intricacy of some of the motors. There is a little motor there. Some of them did survive. There's another one there. A bit of a serial number on the side. But there's lots of little components and it'd be quite tricky things to make up. Like I always wonder about the factories that make these things and you know, people putting this stuff together. What are they getting paid? What is the absolute core cost of these toys? Let's say in China, if you saw these toys in China, I wonder how much they are, but remember there's no one in China that watches uh, these videos because they can't. 
Uh, I, yeah, it does. It, when I look at the wreckage here, it makes me think of a number of things. I can see one of the springs from the wind-up motor here. Let's see if I can get it without it flying away from me. Doing. Oh, oh I think I've got it. There you go. A lot of pent-up energy in that. Well, I'm really happy with what that garden mulcher thing has done to these toy cars. I think they're far more interesting to look at now. If I ended this with my HSC school art for year 12, man, I would have got top prize. Uh, sadly, I didn't do anything as creative as this. Okay, moving right along. Our next knockoff Disney Cars toy is a very strange one. It's like a toy train, cars, tunes, happy electric rail, and it looks horrific. This knockoff toy is, I believe, sort of loosely connected to that excellent DVD there, Cars Tune Mater's Tall Tales. It was a $4 toy, uh, which is relatively inexpensive. The artwork is far fancier than the toys inside. And it's really all about uh, luring a child in to start nagging the parents to say, I want the Mater Tune toy! I've actually bought two of these. Uh, don't ask me why I bought two. This one was also for dollars, but I have an alternative plan uh, to deal with this other set. The back of the box artwork looks like this. It looks very fancy, doesn't it? Um, and it also, curiously, has some instructions there and different orbits you can build for this train. As boring as it sounds, I'm going to go for orbit four. And now it's time to rip into this very, very nasty toy. If I can get it open. Helps I get a little tab going here. This is a very, very common style of little toy knockoff train. Sometimes they are not in knockoff form, sometimes they don't have a brand over them. But uh, you'll find just about every brand on the planet has one of these little knockoff type of toys getting about. Okay, it's free! I'll quickly run through the toys. This is the powered Mater. Uh, noticing just how sick of Friday everything is here, uh, it comes apart really easily. That's the danger of these toys. Let me just throw a battery in here. Hoping the polarity's around the right way. Let's see if it works. Or well, it doesn't work. Uh, welcome to the dark side. Maybe I'll have to open up that other that other toy. Uh, yeah, okay. So we'll just keep mitching on. We're pretending that it worked. I might have to open up the other one. Um, yeah. It's just very dark side. Here's another Mater. Uh, if you like red, white, and blue, well, you're going to get excited. That's the way it couples on. Just horrid, horrid. It would come apart really easily. Strange, it's got details underneath there. There is a blue one. Okay, um, horrible. Uh, but, you know, I see people buying this stuff. It's sharp, It's it looks ugly, the stickers are all over the place. And this is the McQueen, because in those tune stories, you know, Mater goes, I'm not very good at Mater's voice. You know, McQueen, you were there. So I told you I can't do Mater's voice for it very well. It was always stories that uh, uh, McQueen sort of got inserted into. Um, that was one where I think it was like an Evil Knievel one, wasn't it? Well, they're all sort of Evil Knievel. One thing I will say about this set is it has quite a few pieces of straight. That's something that often train sets lack. Just giving this thing a bit of a tap and whatnot. Ah, yes, it has come alive. Um, it's got a bit of power, um, but I wouldn't uh, write home to mum about it. Yeah, in fact, it's, uh, you know, I've seen far, far speedier versions of the little toys. This is uh, a slow coach and uh, not very powerful. Well, as you can see, I've made up that little circuit uh, like the one I showed in the back of the box. Uh, <laughs> I've got a feeling that this thing here is going to struggle to pull these. I might be totally wrong. Let me just connect them up. One thing, it is easy to connect these little uh, train maters and train McQueen on here, and we'll see if this is going to work. Yeah, like I said, I would write home to mum about the speed. Uh, it is only just pulling that along. Uh, do you find that impressive at all? Let me know. I oh, know there'll be some people out there saying, oh, Leo, it looks pretty good. You know, imagine if a little boy or girl doesn't have any toy trains. It'd be the best thing they've ever had. But hey, don't let that take over your brain. This stuff is dangerous. It falls apart really easily. And also, it's illegal. It's not licensed to Disney cars. And just let me pull the train up and I'll just show you uh, what I really, really don't like about these toys. Okay, look at that there. Look at that, that just comes straight off. Imagine a little child uh, put that down their throat, there would be a whole bundle of trouble. Hmm, I'm sort of thinking of a nice way to get rid of this toy. Sort of a nice spectacular way. Yeah, mm, I think I've got a plan. Okay, I do have a very despicable plan here. Uh, Mate is going around there. All cool and covered in missiles and whatnot, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a bomb right under the bridge here. 
And if I get it right, it's going to explode right there. But there's a fairly high chance that I'll miss Q and I won't blow up Mater and cause some other wreckage somewhere else. Okay, chucka chucka choo choo boom. Well, I'm not exactly sure when I got the target, but that little slow motion camera keeled over. Always tricky to uh, shoot a moving target and the slow motion camera failed, but it has been failing me a lot. It's semi-useless in a way. It's wonderful when it works, but useless when it doesn't. I think uh, by studying uh, the wreckage here, we can see whether I got the target or not. I actually have forgotten the sequence uh, that the trains went on, but maybe by looking at the way they're damaged, we can work that out. Well, the first area really to look at is where the bridge was. The bridge has been blown apart. Uh, I used blue tack as a way of confining the charge, so we had some sort of focus going up into the train. Uh, I'm not surprised at all that the track's broken. It's really uh, ratty stuff. I think I have reassembled the train in the way it was that was going around, just as it blew up. And from the witness marks on this train, this is the one which is behind the front carriage. I think when I've let off the charge, I've got literally in between this one here and this one here I think I haven't gone got good slow motion to look at yet I'll work it out when I obviously when I edit it but of course I haven't done that yet um, like I thought you know little bits and bobs have come off that's actually a little helmet piece I think that piece was on there that was blown off so he's lost his wheels he's got a burn mark on his face there that would scorch mater wouldn't it um, but the powered wagon here or the powered mater should I say uh, has been given a devastating blow it's a much smaller charge that I've been using in the other uh, dark side videos uh, that I've been doing. And what was the back of this was the switch, wasn't it? So the switch was there. I'm curious that we lost the front wheels. And there's a sort of looking for witness marks and burn marks. That's what real bomb technicians do to work out what's happened. Although, boys and girls, I'm not a real bomb technician. I'm just pretending. Uh, yeah, it's just really been rattled. And you can see it sort of opened up. At least we get to see... Uh, what is inside here and it's a really um, really simple build in fact look at this it's very similar to Trackmaster 2 in the way the battery terminals work now that's going to surprise you isn't it I wonder if people at Mattel saw the way these knockoff toys were being made look that's just like Trackmaster 2 another educational aspect of this video before I get flagged uh, very interesting I didn't realize that uh, very very basic build very cheap and very simple so just looking at what is the most damaged, well, of course, the epicenter was uh, the bridge area there. The bridge was never going to move away from the blast, so it's the most damaged. But I think uh, this car here, the powered car, the powered mater, I uh, got the next sort of shock. Really, that's just been rattled to death by shock. Okay. I am very surprised that that piece there has survived. But mind you, you might see it just popped away when it blew up. I haven't got, like I keep saying, I haven't got the slow motion to study it. And that would have been the next thing closest, hey? You can tell a lot by looking at the damage. What I'd like to do is just try and pull this back together, and I'd like to do a static blow up of this train here and get it on slow mo. Okay, on that static blast, and I finally did get it in slow motion. Well, the same sort of damage happened to the track here. I had the charge raised up a little tad more. Uh, what is sort of curious was the fact, well, it was already a pretty rattled train, wasn't it? Um, as we'll see, that main train uh, got a direct hammering uh, big time. And I'll get the other bits, and we'll take a very quick look. Yes, when you're a static target, uh, you're much easier to get and get the slow motion cameras up and running. Uh, as you can see, completely and utterly rattled there, uh, broken up into many pieces. The battery was left in there, uh, but the battery didn't get a ding. But 
the little motor has copped a nice dent there. Maybe you learned something from that, uh, maybe you didn't. Uh, don't blame me if you're not learning from seeing this getting destroyed. I've just heard some of the audience say, but Leo, you haven't completely destroyed the train, have you? They look like they need a bit of a touch-up. Hello, Mr. Hammer. Problem solved. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hammer, he's uh, pretty handy when it comes to doing panel beating. I've always noticed that about him. Okay, the next Disney Cars knockoff vehicle we're going to take a look at. It's called the Harmony Bus, but I believe that is red in there. I highly suspect this has actually been pre-played with. It's got symbols like that that looks like Disney Cars, isn't it? Cars 2. On the back here it shows us that. It's strange, it shows us that character there. I've totally forgotten that one's name. Uh, but it does say there are, in the series of these toys you can get a normal fire engine, you can get red, and the one I don't remember the name of. There was a very strange dark side read there. I'll pause the video here so you can have a bit of a uh, chuckle or cry, depending which way you're bent. And there are a few other strange reads and sort of arty artwork all over the box. Underneath the box there's an extensive read related to battery warnings and labelling. This toy takes three AA batteries and it cost me $15. So just on the $15 cost of this rip-off Disney Cars toy, I actually found another fire engine uh, in the same sort of marketplace. Uh, this one here looks like a bubble blowing one. It might be cool to look at as well. Noticing it's not trying to rip off Disney cars or anything. In fact, I think it's a bit bigger than that one there. And this toy here only cost me $5. And I think that's a classic example of what you would call the dark side Disney tax. As soon as you wrap an extremely popular brand around a knockoff toy, well, you can start charging silly money. Anyway, I'll get out Knock Off Red, and I'll battery it up, and we'll give it a spin. One wonders whether it's got a dirty sound chip in there. I think it's been pre-played, because look, it just comes straight out of the box. Come on, Red. Come and play. <laughs> look how spanky and shiny inside the box there is using that sort of foil. That's impressive, isn't it, hey? The boxing's often more impressive than the toy. But also notice here, if I turn the box up, look what's going to come out. There we go. Yes, uh, these bits here would have been holding that toy into the box, and that would have been round the bump and go wheel. Got the amazing fluffy cat with me. I think Bluebell is here somewhere as well. Ah, just as I thought, there's Bluebell. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's just chase these two. Where are they going? Whoa, whoa, there's a cat fight in my garage. Bit of a Thomas Poster thing there. Bluebell is always chasing Fluffy. Gone up there somewhere. And Bluebell's escaped down there. Oh, there he goes. A little bit of a cat fight going on. Can't go anywhere, Fluffy. It's too tight now she's got through. And Bluebell's going to go through there and keep on chasing her. I'll get some batteries into this and um, we'll see what noise comes out. It takes uh, three wondrous AA batteries. Whoa! Oh man, uh, <laughs> okay, it's noisy, I can confirm to you it's a very noisy beast, so let me get the battery cover back on. And curiously, it does have a little screw there. Well, I suppose for a fire truck it looks okay, but the problem is it is a ripoff of red from Disney Cars. Uh, that thing there moves, the uh, ladder there sort of moves, but it doesn't deploy if that makes any sense. It's got wires there, so there's so a big fat light there doing something. Um, yeah, you can probably have your say about what you think about the toy. For $15, I think it was totally overpriced what I got in my hand there. I'll give it a spin on the bump and go circuit. That is, if you can hear me. And there's another DMCA from the channel. Yo! Anyone prepared to name those tunes so I know how to fight the copyright claim when it comes through? And if you're curious, uh, there it is of nearly all the lights turned out. Is it doing things for you, seeing it like that? Sort of flashy, isn't it? Well, yes, there is some limits to this. I'm going to turn this off. That, that is doing my head in. It's extremely loud. I'm going to do a bump and go war with this Disney Cars knockoff red versus that other $5 fire truck that apparently blows bubbles. This is the back of the box of that wondrous fire truck that apparently blows bubbles. It's telling me, of course, it's battery operated, it's got lights and it's got music, and it is a bump and go. 
the end of the box shows that this fire truck might be more fully featured than the knockoff Disney Red. So come in and unbox this beautiful fire engine and we will get some batteries into it. Oh, what is that? Oh, yuck. Okay, uh, we've got some, I don't know what that is, and some sort of insect uh, from China. I've got no idea what that there is. Be it animal or plant, uh, whatever it is, I don't recognise it. Yes, it can be scary what uh, you find in some boxes. Uh, coming in for the unboxing, I better say that. Yeah, this actually, well, for $5, it's not looking too bad. There's a funnel there. It does look like it is a fairly well-featured little critter. There's some bubble juice there, and I think I've got to do a daddy snip. Daddy snips look like this. Quite often, the non-Disney-fied toys, if that makes any sense, are often, I call them the real price. Uh, I think, you know, for $5, it's a trap of a toy. I think that's a pretty good deal. It's got, um, that must be the bubble blower. Is that the ladder that does actually ladderize? If that is a word. You know what it's reminding me of? Dicky Toys actually make a, to uh, a fire engine very similar to this. It's got a piece there, the hose reel, and the pump bit at the back there. Yeah. It's, to me, it's like actually a rip of a Dicky toy, if that makes any sense. Okay, there's the bump and go thing there. I'll get some batteries into this one. There's a bit, bit different on the back here. The battery compartment is also, I believe, the back axle of the truck and the wheels. Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen that sort of design before. Maybe you can tell me if you have. That's well, you know, that's very different. Yes, don't get too excited about this toy. Now I get a closer scrutiny and feel of it. The wheels don't feel that good. It does take three AA batteries. And I'll get those in next. Okay, the batteries are in. I believe that there's like an overflow of the bubble tank because it does take bubble mix, which will blow bubbles there. And I think you put the bubble mix in here. I'm not sure how much bubble mix it'll take, but I'll try not to overfill it. Yep, I uh, guess what happened? Um, I overfilled it. This bubble blowing fire truck has actually got a very clever bubble generator on this. If I just take that piece off there. There's like a little arm that will spin around when I turn it on, it will form the meniscus bubble and then the air gets blown up uh, through there to create lots of bubbles. I've got a Thomas the Tank which has one of those machines on it as well, and it can sometimes take a little bit of turning on before it will start bubble blowing on, eh? Wow! It's off to a flying start. Um, and it's actually going to do a run around. I've got to put its little piece back on. Okay, let me put it on. If I can get it back on. Okay, uh, we're up and running. For a little $5 fire engine that blows bubbles, uh, mind you, I don't think it would last that long, that toy. It's sort of alright. Well, I should really get the party started. We've got the bubble machine on the lights, now we want the music. Yeah! Go, fake red, go. Let's see if you can knock out the real fire engine. Watch out, guys! Oh, red's doing a bit of a double take there. He's scared. He's maybe scared of bubbles. And they're going to try and um, dodge each other from this point on, I dare say. Oh, a bit of a smack over there. Oh, Red's done the double smack. He's sort of stuck. He's gone crazy. Come on, Red! And the real bubble-blowing uh, guy is trying to lay down a slick of slippery bubbles to confuse Red. It's uh, possibly the sort of silliness that you could watch all day long, but we won't. Okay, there they are in the dark. I know someone will say, oh, we want to see both of them in the dark. Well, there it is. It really does pump the bubbles out, that bubble blowing fire engine. But one thing that is definitely happening is that that slick of bubbles there is very slippery and the bump and goness of these toys, in particular the real fire engine, uh, tends to sort of just spin around on the slick. So I uh, might come in and turn this off. Oh, I actually don't mind the sound of that one because it sounds like a real fire engine. And we'll turn this one off as well. I like that bubble generator, I really do. Ooh, yeah. For five dollars, it's um not too bad. Okay, the tale of two bump and go fire engines. I've sort of got no problems with this one here. It's just a very cheap battery operated toy that also blows some epic bubbles. We'll sit that over there and play it for another day, but this one here, well, we're not going to play it with another day because it's about to be landed with something quite shocking. 
I'm very curious of the material science behind this and how sturdy it has been built and I think the best way we can find out about that is pack it with some silly slides here mm. and also the stuff that I know that works really well magic poo I know someone will ask later how did you get the silly sludge toxic silly sludge into the fire engine we'll actually end up making a little custom hole and it's just a matter of pumping the pump out with the sludge oh yeah just taking your time I know you'll also ask, well Leo, how much silly sludge toxic stuff did you put inside that? I've actually put a tub and a half in. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's half filled this, but it wouldn't be that far off. It seems like the bulk of it is clumped to the back here. I've actually put a peephole here so I can see what's going on in the front cab. I can sort of see it in there and the explosive charge will be right in the center of the fire truck. My prediction is when the charge goes off, it'll act like a big hydraulic hammer in there and the explosives will affect a lot of the cheap and chunky plastic in this knockoff toy. I think we can kiss Red. Good night. Okay, Red, we're going to try and turn you green. That wasn't Disney Cars, that was officially Ghostbusters. I've got lots of cleanup uh, after that one. Very curious the way that knockoff toy broke up, it has sort of split up the metal. Uh, we'll see that when we take a look at the parts. There's bits sprayed over that way, there's gloopy goobies up there. Uh, that was the epicenter there. The GoPro has copped a slap of goo. And the back of the truck is over there. Just let me gather all the bits and bobs to this knockoff toy. Uh, I lost the electrical connectivity of this thing. I dare say the goo got into the circuit board. But I'd like to take a look at what is left. Oh, you know the famous saying, one flash in your ash. Uh, it is a very uh, lovely looking pile of destruction there. I think what is different about this one is there are actually very few small pieces. When this one blasted, we've ended up with some larger pieces, obviously like that. And maybe that's sort of showing us uh, what we're dealing with here. It is sort of a bit stronger than your average rubbish that gets about mine. Yeah, it is stronger. Uh, very curious that the cab uh, split right down the middle there. Normally it'll track along one of the lines within the toy. It has decided to go right through the middle. That's the front there. Okay, and that would have been down there powering the little wheels. Although I did take away the <laughs> uh, little runabout wheels because, well, if the thing was working, it would have been lovely, wouldn't it? But hey, the slime got into all the circuitry. Uh, this is the back piece here, and quite a bundle uh, of stuff in there. There is the sound chip. I believe that's the sound chip there. Uh, I don't know what that thing there is that a little capacitor or something and I'm audience and I'm far more than me a nice blast line through there remember the charge was just about the end of my finger there uh, omnidirectional that means it works in all directions and the slime would have just helped uh, send the shock waves all the way through the back has sort of survived which has um, surprised me a bit okay there's the bottom of the battery cover there that's the ladder isn't it uh, the batteries are here one battery got a belt uh, that middle battery there, see the dinger right there, okay. I always wonder what it does to the batteries when it happens, probably not very nice. Uh, there, some of the smaller parts, and the electric motor has lost the back of it there. Uh, the electric motor is fried. I think it's one of those blasts, uh, because of the nature of the goo, um, how can I say it, it's fairly... Uh, well, you can see whatever the word is for that type of viscosity, it's quite thick. 
in fact it's very thick in, in essence and I think when it blew up there were these great tendrils of green uh, moving uh, my old friends in the, my old workplace would be very very happy with that uh, but I think it was always the case of the green uh, versus the red no pun intended I did have a bit of magic poo in there I have got no idea where it's gone there wasn't much in there, uh, but I can't see one skerrick of it, although it is very different in viscosity to the, the green gooby stuff. Well, I'll clean up this mess here, and we'll take a look at another toy. Ah, oh, yes, these next Disney cars sets of knockoff toys are some of the most common that I see getting about. This set here was $10, but you may see them for $15. You may see them cranking up for $20. You may see it for, let's say, $7. Uh, that while we're under here... We'll take a look at the artwork that is there. The artwork is actually more impressive than what's inside the box, I can guarantee, on these ones. And as I've often said in other Dark Side videos, for some reason, the Disney Cars characters, or knockoff cars, are some of the worst knockoff toys that you'll come across. They present some of the best real toys, but for some reason, the Dark Side ones are just all over the shop. I mean, look at the crazy stickers on this. Poorly painted, poorly built. I think some have pullback motors. Sometimes, maybe we'll try McQueen as a pullback. Yeah, he works. Okay. <laughs> but there's no, there's no value in this. Let you, let you uh, have a look at the stickers. They're absolutely rotten toys. They just feel rotten as well. They've got sharp edges. Uh, they don't, they don't feel nice to play with. It's a sort of toy that if you played with it with any sort of roughness, it's going to just be busted apart. I could, I reckon I could just crunch on my hands. That's what they feel like. Okay, and Luigi, I don't know who that blue one was, but Luigi, I know my audience will know, I think. There you go. The horrible sounds too. Some very strange stickers on these. You're probably laughing. Some very poor paintwork as well. Uh, but overall, some really, really bad knockoff toys. I have got a very evil plan, uh, hopefully to display to you how rotten these toys are. Uh, quite simply, I'm actually going to rebox these toys. But I'm going to put inside McQueen here, I'm going to actually stack him with Magic Poo, and only Magic Poo and a nice big charge, and I'm going to put McQueen there, and who was the next one, was the blue one next, and uh, was it Luigi, my goodness I hope I'm right there, basically repackage the toy, put the cover back on, and McQueen, I think when McQueen blows up, he's going to basically take out Mater, and whoever that is, and I don't even think Luigi would survive either. I think this is a sort of blast that's going to teach us all about how poorly the toys are made and the magical properties of magic poo. Well that there is actually magic poo. It is very different to that toxic green slime. Uh, it's very stiff. It's actually very dry as well. I like it. Uh, there's McQueen at the bottom off. I've actually put some tape where the wheels are because I don't want the uh, poo to escape uh, because it will be sitting there for a while. I'm just putting the poo in like that making sure there's no air voids and then I'll be basically putting this part here, there's a little backward motor thing uh, on like that and there'll be a charge in there and McQueen's in there go, not ka -chow, but kaboom Hey McQueen, remember the time when I saved your life when you were full of poop and gonna go bang in that box? Use it there, you know What was McQueen's catch cry again? Ka what? Ka 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 Oh, that's right, Lightning McQueen's catchphrase is kaboom. Okay, I don't know what sort of sense you can make out of that reckless, nonsensical explosion there, apart from the fact that the poo looks fantastic when it's bouncing around, nothing left of McQueen there. If I look over the table, uh, well, there's only really small parts of McQueen. 
Uh, this is the stuff that was down on the ground. Uh, a Thomas Mini, it was one of my magnetized ones. I put a magnet in the bottom of them. That had jumped down. I'm not sure whether the cameras captured that. It was down well away from the table. I know it was magnetically attached to the table. But if we keep looking at the destruction here, uh, there's more parts of McQueen here, more magic poo. Like I really do like this stuff. I don't know what sort of plastic this is. I know it's like high bouncing ball stuff. There'll be someone who knows their chemistry and can explain it to me. Uh, Mater uh, is nowhere near as destroyed as what I thought. Really all of these lost uh, was that piece there. But that sort of shows you just how crummy the toys are. I mean, what sort of toy has a piece that just comes off so easily like that? I know, you'll probably say, oh, well, you can make a great custom Mater out of that. Uh, well, let's not go there, hey? So, uh, I'd sort of say Mater has survived. Uh, he didn't get the massive bang I thought that he was going to get. Uh, he looks like he's basically intact. I think that's the way the axle normally is. <laughs> As for the blue guy here... We never, I never quite worked out its name. I would say uh, it's somehow a survivor as well, uh, which really, really did surprise me. I'll be quite honest there because uh, when McQueen was was a very devastating explosion. If I get um, this one out, it's very hard to get it out because I really did seal up the packaging here. Come on, try to chop it out. Yes, this one. Um, I'm hoping it's Luigi. Man, he'll be, you'll be crying if I'm totally wrong. I can't see anything wrong with that, that one. It was the furthest away from the blast. But you know what? Uh, between that one there, uh, Mater Mater, and this one here, I've got a quick fix. Welcome, Mr. Hammer again. Highly efficient at dealing with these nasty toys. It's only going to take the slightest tap to destroy these because they are so rotten. Okay, here we go. Ah. Uh, again, your handiwork is always appreciated. I think Mr. Hammer is having an arm wrestle with Mata there. Don't worry, boys and girls. Mr. Hammer uh, can always be easily fixed. Well, sadly, I've got to leave this video here. It's well past the two-minute attention span that I seem to achieve on nearly every video I upload to YouTube. It's killing my channel, completely killing my channel. Down there in that box is all the destruction of these horrible Dark Side knockoff toys that we've done in this video. And I'm sort of thinking that the Disney company um, should come along and say, wow, thanks, Leo, for taking this stuff off the market and keeping it out of the children's hands. Let's just be reminded of what's in here. Oh, the memories of this episode, hey? All sorts of bits and bobs and all different sizes. Wow. Oh, wow. Memories flooding back, aren't they? That is, if you watch the video, there's a whole ton of people, obviously, who aren't. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. But hey, from all that destruction there, hopefully I have taught you something about these nasty, nasty knockoff toys. And possibly what's more scary than that giant pile of Disney cars wreckage on the table there is those two there. Five Nights at Freddy's, Freddy Bear. This is a knockoff one. How much do you think I paid for the knockoff one? I'll tell you how much I paid for the real one. I can tell you that because there's a tag there. I paid $20 there for the real one. Here's the knockoffs tag there. Okay, how much did I pay for this knockoff Freddy? Yes, yeah, the old Five Nights at Freddy's toys. Extremely popular, uh, most difficult to find. And the knockoff one there was found in a mainstream shopping mall. That's fairly evil, isn't it? Well, I better leave this video here. As always, thanks for watching. And bye for now. And I'll throw up the extra footage of the static cars train wreck. The tune made a thing. Because you can't keep your eyes off a train wreck.